it got so much attention at the time. Are you surprised it hasn't gone down in the books like a Bundy, like a Manson? I'm I'm really surprised that he quote has not gotten the notoriety that uh, Ted Bundy got, uh, Charles Manson got, because to me he was more brutal than Ted Bundy, and he was br more brutal than than Manson because Manson was chicken. He had his people do the killing for him, for the most part that I'm aware of. Again, Bundy killed his victims. Knowles killed his victims. But I don't. I, it, I think of, he was more vicious than than Bundy was. It's kind of ironic that Knowles really seemed to want a legacy. He wanted. Oh, he wanted notoriety, but he never got it to the standpoint of uh, what. Ted Bundy got. Of course, Ted Bundy uh, kept conning them every time they get ready to execute him. He, he'd give them one more bit of information. Uh, he tried to pull it out as long as he could, and then, they, of course, they put him in old spark and took care of him. Don't you wish you could have heard those tapes of Knowles? I would love to have listened to him to try to understand why he did what he did. You don't kill... 16, 17, 18, 29, 30, 35 people. You just don't do it. There are people that do, but the average person, they don't go around killing people. And for somebody to kill that many people in that many different types of uh, murders, you know, you strangle them, you stab them, you shoot them, uh, it's something wrong. T tell us about that day when you got first got involved in the Milledgeville case? Well, I didn't know anything about it uh, until the next day. The bodies were found uh, around 3, 3.30. His wife had pulled a double at uh, Whitey C. She was, a, I believe she was a nurse at Whitey C. And she had pulled a double, and when she got home, she found the bodies and, and called us, and they responded, and they started an investigation and I was working day shift, and I got off at 3 o'clock, and I didn't know anything about it until the next day. Uh, the next day I went to work, and that's when the chief called me in and said, want you to work on this, follow up on these leads, and et cetera. And that's when we started sending out teletypes and uh, following up on all that. The GBI was involved. Uh, they were called immediately uh, to come and process the crime scene. Uh, they called the GBI out of Atlanta, the, the crime scene text to come down. Uh, back in those days, that was a, a vicious crime. Uh, it's uh, worked a lot of murders, but that was the bloodiest crime scene uh, I'd ever seen. Uh, he was stabbed so many times, he bled through the mattress. Now, how did he get to the home? I'm assuming he followed Carswell from Macon. Uh, apparently Carswell invited him home and, and uh, he uh, followed him uh, to the house. We, we never knew because there's nobody to ask. And who all was at home at the time? Carswell and Amanda, his daughter. How old was the daughter? I don't know, 15, 16, 17. I had to go back and dig into it, but she was a teenager. For him to invite this stranger to his house with their young daughter, clearly, Noel seemed trustworthy. Like I said, he he was conning, he was conniving. Uh, he could he could sell you a bill of goods. Did he take anything from their home? Took a Jonathan Seagull ring. Uh, took some other jewelry. Uh, took. Uh, a uh, sport coat and several other items which were recovered in Florida in the car that uh, he abandoned when he had kidnapped the girl down in Florida. That's how we got involved in it. Where did he go from here? Went back to Macon, I reckon spent the night and then he started traveling again. We, we could put him in Atlanta, we could put him in Atlantic Beach, we could put him in Jacksonville, put him in West Palm Beach, put him in, you know, numerous places after that. Looks like he committed these murders in Milledgeville. 
got the stuff and just moved on. That's what most of them do. They don't hang around. What did, what was he traveling and from the here, do you know? Have no idea. Don't know how he got to Millersville or how he left. Can't exactly take a, a plane or a train to Milledgeville. Maybe you can, but not too. It's a lot of walking. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, what makes it so bad is is trying to define it. Traveling criminals, until you find the crime and you know it happened at a certain time, that criminal could be 200 miles down the road. And nowadays, uh, it, like I said, it'd be a lot different working this case today than it was 45 years ago because you had to wait for the credit card receipts to come in. Now you get on the Internet and you got instant copies. Um, what was different about the credit card receipts back then? Well, <laughs> do you remember credit card receipts where they had to put it in the machine and slide it? Well, a lot of businesses didn't turn them in until once a week. Some didn't turn them in until once a month. If you stole a man's credit card on the 1st of July, you used it on the 2nd of July, it would have probably been August the 15th before that credit card receipt ever got to the home office of Chevron, Amico, MasterCard, whoever the card was issued by. Then you'd have to contact them to pull up the information. Of course, in most cases, you had to have a court order to get it. Nowadays, you get a court order, you get on the Internet, boom, you've got your inst instant information. You don't have to wait 45 days to get it. So you think it would have been much quicker if something like that happened now? A lot quicker. You, you can find it, like I said, instantly just about it. Were the credit card receipts instrumental to him? Well, it was as far as building the timeline on where he was and when he was. Uh, like I said, we've got receipts from that we in the car that West Palm Beach recovered. We did a timeline. That's the reason we know how many states he was in, how many cities he was in, because he used the credit cards. I know he used two different credit cards. One was a Mr. Golden, who was from Meggs, Georgia. Uh, his card was stolen in Macon uh, around the 1st of November, I think. And the other one was uh, Bates from Lima, Ohio. So I know he killed Bates. Uh, I don't know about uh, Golden. I don't think he killed Golden. But he killed Bates and from Lima, Ohio. And 90% uh, of the receipts we had were from Bates. He used his credit card. He went to the Holiday Inn. Uh, apparently, he preferred the Holiday Inn for some reason because most of the receipts were from Holiday Inns. You had mentioned that crime scene here in Milledgeville. Uh, do you remember anything? What stands out about it to you? You had mentioned all the blood. Mm -hmm. Anything else? The bedroom door to Amanda's bedroom, uh, the door facing was kicked in. She tried to barricade the door, and he kicked the door facing off. I remember that. But other than that, it looked like a normal house. So maybe what I would kind of, to me, that sounds like he probably killed the dad first. Oh, yeah. Probably woke her up, uh, him hollering, I'm sure he... When he was stabbed, he hollered, uh, probably woke her up. She saw what was going on, tried to barricade herself in the bedroom, and he turned and went after her, strangled her. When you hear the name Paul John Knowles, what goes through your mind? <laughs> How many people have still not been identified as victims of Knowles? You believe there are more victims out there? Yeah. How many? I have no idea. People, serial killers, uh, they kill a lot of people. It's not, you find some, some you don't. And we know that Paul John killed 17, 17 at least connected. Yeah. I would say more, but I know he killed seven in Georgia. He killed two in Milledgeville, two in Hawkinsville, two in Macon, one in Houston County. 
uh, killed, I know, four in Florida, two in Alabama, two in Nevada, two in Connecticut that uh, I know of. And look, you were talking about doing your research in that short amount of time. How many states did you track them in? Based on credit card receipts, uh, we tracked them through 33 states and 54 cities. You think he killed somebody everywhere he went? I would uh, most likely bet on it. Why is that? Well, you heard the old saying, leopards don't change their spots, killers don't change their M.O.s. So kind of describe what you think might have happened as he moved from city to city. He... uh, he was a con artist. Uh, he could con you out of your wallet, your watch, your car. Uh, he was a smooth talker. Uh, some people identified him as a ladies' man. Uh, he was <laughs> brutal. He was mean. He was vicious. Um, he's just... <laughs> Thank God we don't have a whole lot of them around. There there are serial killers out there. But I don't know what makes a person do what he did. 